Hi, my name is Manuel Arturo Abreu, and I'm a poet and artist in Portland, Oregon. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, archive accessibility on Facebook.com. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to welcome you to my garage. I've been living here for two years now, and recently, in the interest of exploring the effect that precarity has on the distinction between inhabiting a space and making a work in that it engenders a slippage between these two. Um, I started an artist's residency in my living space recently, and this is my celebratory postcard for my artist residency. And it says, I've begun a residency in my garage, hashtag woohoo, couldn't be more excited. Manuel Arturo Abreu, artist in residence, garage 2014 twigtech.tumblr.com contribute via paypal to garage residency at gmail.com and the issue i wanted to talk about today was my frustration with facebook now i've tried four or five times to download my facebook data you can do this on uh you go to the little arrow in the top right and then go to settings on the web browser i'm not sure how you do it on mobile um but this never works for me. And so I usually find myself having to manually go to my old statuses. Um, and my practice a lot of the time involves sort of um, self-plagiarism or self-appropriation along with um, incorporating actual found text. I like to treat the things that I produce as found materials in themselves. Um, it kind of creates an equivocation, if that makes sense between um, artistic raw materials or poetic raw materials. Um, but anyway, this sort of self-reflexive or self-appropriative um, going back or scrying my old statuses was very time consuming. Scrolling is really annoying. Um, and I was doing it pretty often actually. So to solve this problem, um, I scrolled uh, one last time, so to speak, and went on lulu.com and published two books um, of my favorite of my Facebook statuses, um, partly out of vanity and um, partly out of solving the problem of archive accessibility with a literal, you know, turn of the page, like boom. Um, and so what I'd like to do is read from uh, page 45 of this uh, collection of statuses called Facebook Statues. Um, and these are some notes about architecture that I wrote on the 6th of March, 2014. 6th of March, 2014. Notes about architecture. The last thing we need is more buildings. Decisions about how to inhabit a space constitute architectural decisions. Architecture measures space using gesture in order to inscribe a topology or a domain of analysis like a quantum dot on futurity. Is it that form is the aesthetic dimension of function or that function is the aesthetic dimension of culture? What kind of a doubt is a doubt that one can be certain of? In the same way that architecture mimics a future anterior, language mimics intentionality and embodiedness, allowing for more precise articulations of it. This precision confers on the mimicry an ability to alter what it mimics. Call this skeuomorphism. When a designed object interprets the features of some other object as legible within its formal language and then mimics the object in this language. Premise. Just as there is some limited set of structural axioms from which formal gestures emerge, there is a limited set of physiological states from which emotions emerge. The recursive capacity of language allows for the rhizomatic expansion of these limited aesthetic sets whose members differ arbitrarily. But in fact, it is not that such sets exist, it is that in positing their existence, a decidedly platonic or formalist mood, we, per we perform a normative claim about relationality, prescribe ways of acting within a space or a discourse. 
Transitively then, the use of language and or architecture constitutes such a set of normative claims. Even Libius Wood's concept of free or radical space, that is, space with no function or meaning, this imposition of lack is itself a normative claim. Again, how can a doubt be a doubt when it's certain of? What is the structure of the lack that is felt? Quote, Skeuomorphism is a safe and familiar approach for designers and viewers. The vague thought that not knowing exactly what is being mimicked contributes to the power that mimicry holds, to be haunted by my affect, which fills out the apparent clarity of use. This is how you use it, not like that. That a structure can feign to present itself as self-evident with respect to use is one of the great monsters of our time. Premise. If negativity is the imminence of disruption in a structure, one emergent property of a structure is always pain. Response. What is pain? 